Right you bastards, this is some uh, Belgian prepper and today we're going to talk about something that is not too much discussed in the prepper community and that is pest control. Well, imagine if you are going to have a long term bug out, uh, bug, in, bug in situation, uh, you can have two ways, you can either have a stockpile or a food pantry and or you can uh, grow your food in your garden and or keep animals. So what uh, what what uh, have these two things in common that could ruin both of these plants? Well, uh, pests, and we are talking about things like mice, rats, insects, sometimes even birds, and yeah, that's uh, not good. Even if you have a pantry in your in your home, if there is a mice or a rat infestation, they can now through the package uh, package of even. Hard, pla hard and plastic buckets or uh, containers, and that's uh, not good. So, yeah, what can you can we do about it? First of all, we can try to prevent that the, and these uh, these pests can reach into our food sources. Well, if you have a if you have a food pantry or stockpile inside of your home, try to make sure that there are no cracks or ways that these animals could reach it. If that's not possible, because these little creatures can grow to even the tiniest places and if they smell food, they can even break through certain weak points inside of your uh, the room where their stockpile is. So, yeah, first, uh, second thing you can do is store your food uh, properly. What do I mean by that? I would suggest in very hard plastic, where not even the most determined little bastard of a rat can now through to it and or you can store it high enough where they cannot climb easily on it or in a metal containers so those are the things you can do to prevent that these uh, pests can get into your food stockpiles um, yeah but that's not always enough so if you have uh, a rat or a mice problem there are several ways you can deal with it but we're talking about the survival situation, you, so you cannot always go to the store for poison, for, po yeah, for poison or these modern traps. So we are going to talk about traps that are more uh, or ways to deter or capture uh, pests in the old school way. Because yeah, like I said, you cannot always go to the store for a refill. So what are the things that you can put inside of your home or your shed? To catch mice and rats well the first and the most one of the most simple things are these kind of traps that activate when there is a when one of these animals tries to catch as this uh, very sensitive uh, hook uh, hanger that is connected with the trap so when if one get in and touch it is a little bit it closes and you can reuse it and make sure that this is made of uh, metal because a desperate rat or mice can even gnaw through plastic, so yeah, that's something you need to watch out for. But this is durable; uh, it will not. This uh, is made out of stainless steel, so it will not rust. So you can even keep it outside or uh, inside of your barn um, and inside of a, a cellar. So yeah, a trap like this, it's old school, but it still works perfectly. Uh, the next thing you can do is. Very simple, uh, these mice traps. Uh, this is a modern variant, you have the wooden ones, but I prefer these ones because in the other, the old ones, they have more chance that you can escape from out of it or they are can get or they can activate it without uh, getting hurt. Uh, this one, it's more tougher with it, if you can see it. It's a very sensitive uh, platform from, you put it inside of this thing and the moment it touches this little piece it will uh, snap snap uh, close and i can assure you this is very very deadly because of the power and the little spikes and they will not even can escape out of that the mice so yeah a few a few of these and a routine check and you will uh, be able to catch a lot of mice uh, yeah this is uh, the what i always use as bait is the same thing that they are after. Most people would, uh, would put something in like 
like the traditional cheese, but that did not work. What I uh, what I used to what I what I always do is uh, in the shed where I keep my guinea pigs, they the it will attract a lot of mice. So it, that's something I cannot cannot prevent. There will always be mice in there because it's a little bit more in the outside. And yeah, that's a hard way to keep the mice out. But what I always do is I take some of the food of the guinea pigs and I put it in this. Why? Because it will it will something it will be something familiar for the mice. So they will not see it more as a danger. If you put something in that it, that they do not on a regular basis see the mice, like peanut butter or chocolate, some will get attracted to it and others will be wary of it and will not go to the trap. So try to put something familiar in that the mice, if they are always there, will be familiar with and will not be wary when they uh, get onto the trap. So that's a little trick that you can use for uh, catching more of the mice. Uh, next thing you can do is yeah, I told rat, rat poison is not uh, mice. Uh, rat and mice poison is not uh, available option. But if you're going to use poison uh, like this, I would advise to buy several types of rat and mice poison. Why? If I noticed, if you lay one type of poison and you keep using it, eventually the rats will learn that that what what the smell that they associate with their dead brothers, brethren, brethren, or how do you say this, they will associate it with that. My rats are smart, so they will smell, oh, that, that smell equal my dead friend equal uh, danger. So if you keep changing the, the, how do you say this, the poison, the poison, they will not get familiar with, they will not learn that quickly from it and you will catch more mice with it. So yeah, I do not try to, I do not like to use poison because I have, I, I like to I have several animals in my uh, in my homestead so yeah I'm always afraid that one of those will take one of these uh, package of poison and will get killed by itself and the same thing for the the, the little dog of my girlfriend who tries to bite uh, bite into everything they find new so that's kind of dangerous for it all right the next thing you can do for mice is I would suggest if you do not, if you do not have these uh, during a survival situation and you cannot go to the store, you can improvise yourself by a simple bucket. What can you do? You can take a little, little uh, or a walking plank, put it right here, and you can put something very light on it uh, with a little bit of bait, like foods or like what I said, uh, things that they usually find around here. And the moment they they step on the very light uh, plank or something that wobbles, they step on it, they fell in it, and then you have catch, uh, caught uh, the mice or the rat. Make sure that the bucket is very smooth so they cannot climb out of it. But these are the kinds of improvised uh, traps that you can lay for the mice if you do not have anything else. Uh, the same thing goes for uh, Tedis uh, DSA survival handbook, but there is a whole, if you can perhaps see, chapter about traps. You can, uh, these traps are usually for a bigger game like rabbits, but these traps, if you can uh, scale them down, are equally useful against mice and rats that might walk into your property. So you can, this way, you can not only get rid of the rats, but you can also learn how to make traps uh, in your own, in your own, own home or your garden. So yeah, that's a kind of a little, a, a small scale training that you can do. So that's another benefit of uh, learning uh, how to make traps from these uh, survival manuals. The next you can do is uh, if you get if you get uh, rats, big ones. I used to have big rats in my garden, and they would always come around uh, uh, at a certain times of the year where they would try to steal. Uh, the food from my chickens that I lay around and these rats could be like this big. So yeah, too big for to catch them with something small like this or even sometimes they were even too big to catch them with these because they would even get with their butt stuck with these and still get out. 
So sometimes you just have to shoot them. Uh, what do I use for, for that? I use my uh, my pellets, uh, my air rifle. This is a 5.5 millimeter air gun, and it's a 7.5 joule. So it's just above uh, around the limit. You can legally own the fire, this kind of firepower without a license. So uh, if you're going, uh, one little tip: if you're going to shoot rats, I would say this is also a good kind of a practice. You sh you learn mark marksmanship. You learn how to hunt, how to to learn the behavior of the animals to find the place where they would definitely come, await them, and then shoot them. So yeah, it can be even a a little cruel part of uh, how do you say this? Uh, not entertainment, but a hobby perhaps, like hunters. But in this case, you hunt rats. So what I a little tip that I want to give is uh, I used to use pellets. Of a 5.5 millimeter with uh, with a pointer tip. What uh, what does that mean? It means that I was very accurate with this rifle, but the problem was it only made it went through the rat with such a speed that it will not damage the rat, the rat too much. So even if I hit them, they could eat, they could still run away and I don't know where they went or that they even survived it, but they were still alive. The moment uh, I used uh, flat um, flat pellets with a cross on it, like the like the like a dum dum, that way they were usually dead from the first shot because a dum dum round will uh, will uh, shatter around at impact. It will hit some um, uh, vital organs of the rat and it will kill the rat immediately instead of leaving a, a small hole and for the rest of their perhaps short life. I don't know what happened to them. But that way you are sure of a kill shot. So an air rifle is always a good investment, and not only for rats. You can you can also use it to, to hunt on birds that are in your garden during a bug in survival situation or a long term. And even if because this is a big caliber for an air rifle, it can be even be used in self defense. So an air rifle is a very good investment for pest control. And yeah, it can be a little hobby, hobby part-time hunting skills that you develop. So yeah, that's something you can do. If you do not, if you do, uh, if you cannot own an air rifle for some reason, just improvise or buy one of these uh, uh, catapults. It's very easy. It's just like a very small bow that you hold, hold like this. You can take anything, uh, rounded uh, pellets are advisable for more accuracy. accuracy. But you can even use rocks. You will see some rodents or a rat or mice, and perhaps you can try to hit them with this uh, catapult or slingshot is perhaps a better English word. So this is just a very simple, cheap thing that you can do uh, to hunt to uh, to kill off some bigger rats. Uh, do not underestimate a catapult. This kind of uh, catapult can shoot very very hard. So, yeah, that's something that you you might want to watch out for if you have people walking around that they do not get hurt, no, nor by the slingshot, nor by the air rifle. I will come to this within a minute. Another thing you can do is scare off the rodents or perhaps some, not only mice, but rats, mice, perhaps cats that you do not want on your property. Uh, this is a survival radio. And this this little thing has has something that you can use actually in a way that yeah I will just show it. This has some a little light, but you can turn it onto automatic, and uh, the light goes out. Perhaps it will take some time, perhaps, or I move too much with it. Yeah, the, it will. I move too much with it, so it's no use here. What happens is the moment that you that something walks around this uh, before this sensor, this light will spring on, and that can scare rodents like rats, mice. So the same thing you can use is, uh, uh, or even cats, are these things that you find in garden depot depots or stores. These are the the, li the little things that you like. Uh, how do we say this? Fake rocks or little animals. That you place somewhere 
somebody something or somebody walks uh, in front of it and it will make a sound or make a light and if you put that in sensible places uh, like in your barn or uh, your pantry there is a there is a chance that when there is an animal walk uh, like a rat walking in front of it it will be scared by the light and it will run away so it's a, like a little determinant that you can use with this and uh, or something similar like this that you find in home depot or something uh, yeah the same thing uh, i do not know if this is true it's been uh, it's kind of a myth that i cannot find uh, disproven or proven about it so if you have some uh, experience uh, or knowledge of this i would really like to know because i heard that rats get scared away by if you have guinea pigs something to do with the sounds that they constantly make and i don't know about it but since uh, i used to have always big rats in my garden like these big uh, bastards and uh, since i got the guinea pigs i never seen any rat anymore i do not find any tunnels of the rats there is no no food being stolen from my chickens so yeah since i got the guinea pigs i do not have any rats in a way anymore so the mice i do have they they are not scared of the guinea pigs but rats for some reason i do not see that see anymore so yeah that's uh, in a way using an animal to scare an earth uh, away i don't know if this is true but it's something that i noticed so talking about uh, animals to scare away you can also use animals as pest control we are talking about cats if you have a few cats around these are master hunters these are responsible for millions of uh, death for tiny bird for birds and rats and mice in uh, europe so imagine during a survival situation like uh, a scenario where there is shit hit a fan or some natural disaster and yeah the the cats are getting eaten for some because there is a famine or something or the cats cannot be mobile around and uh, yeah that way mice and rats can populations can grow so i would advise get a cat and if you are desperate do not eat a cat because cats that uh, are around, around in the neighborhood they will catch mice and rats and those rats and mice will not eat the crops that you try to grow to during a famine so that's something that you need to watch out for the same thing goes for these little dogs that were bred for catching rats and mice during world war one like for example or in busy cities like london in in the time i think yorkshire terriers are one of these uh, types of dogs that were bred for especially this reason so yeah, that could be a way to to catch uh, mice and rats, dogs and and uh, tiny dogs and rat and cats. Um, yeah, if you want to deter some other creatures, we are now going to talk about insects. Insects can be a big plague, I know, because I, we had a Colorado beetle uh, plague uh, two years ago, and my all my potatoes were almost eaten by those little bastards. So yeah. There are you for insects are a big uh, big uh, big disruption if you're going to garden for for your uh, long term begin planning or your homestead. So what can you do? I would advise to yeah try to find natural predators to to lure them in or get sacrificial plants. What I do is I keep a lot of plants that people call uh, consider weeds. But I keep them so the good insects will be attracted and will eat mo uh, most of the bad insects. So I do not have to use pesticides or so or stuff like that that you will not get into get your hands that easily on in a survival situation, uh, like when the stores are closed or it's too expensive. So yeah, what I like to do is I put stinging nettles uh, everywhere in my garden. Uh, why? First of all, stinging nettles. Look at my video about stinging nettles. It's a very good plant with a lot of benefits. And one of those benefits is they attract lice. Uh, no, wait. It's not lice from people's hair, but it's, the, it's those little lice that eat the, the leaves of the plants. I do not know the English name for it, but they get first attracted to those for some reason. 
and yeah then you have less chance that they will go to your potato plants or other plants and vegetables that you're growing to your garden so yeah another benefit of it is um, ladybugs like to put their eggs onto stinging nettles so what will happen be because of this uh, if you have stinging nettles and ladybugs are all, all around ladybugs will eat the light the, the plant lice to say and that way you can bring some balance into your garden if you have only placed uh, the, the vegetable that you want to plant yeah insects will be drawn to that but if you have more kind of a different kinds of plants around it those are more sacrificial plants that will be perhaps eaten first around the place where you grow your vegetable plants or beds uh, the next thing is ants ants are I, I, do, I, I like to keep ants in my garden for breaking off materials and protect against uh, certain insects because the ants also hunt on certain types of uh, pest insects but if you have a problem with ants inside of your house I got a, a solution that always seemed to work with me a few times a year there is a, uh, there is a period where ants try to get into my house and I located the entry po points, but the problem is there are several entry points. So what do you do? I will show you what you can do. What I like to do is something like this. Uh, these are these kind of uh, poisons for ants. When the ants get inside of it, they will not die immediately. They will take the poison to their nest and they will die over there. So what happens is, uh, this is a uh, because of uh, I cleaned here a little bit, so so the the coins are not in a straight line. But I like to use copper coins that we almost that we yeah that we almost not use in Belgium. So everybody is stuck with their copper um, copper or nickel coins. So what do you do with with these copper coins? You lay them in a path where you suspect the ants will come in. And what uh, happens? Ants do not like copper, so they will prefer uh, they will not get near it. So if you make a line around the place where the where the ants will go in and put some poison on the exits, they will certainly walk through the po rather through the poison than through the copper coins. So that's just a little tip to get rid of ants inside of your home. So what is another pest that you have? Mosquitoes. Well. I would, uh, I would just say to get some netting uh, inside of your uh, windows or doors that uh, mosquitoes will not get that easily inside. But if they are inside, you can perhaps use something like... Uh, there are certain types of herbs that, uh, that uh, mosquitoes will not uh, like to get near it. So like citronella, uh, la lavender, uh, uh, we call it uh, citron... Uh, lemon lemongrass we call it uh, in translated i do not know the english the, the proper english name for it but those things will scare the mosquitoes away uh, smoke will also deter uh, mosquitoes and garlic apparently but i'm not sure about that last i will test that one out but it's just an idea so if you have any ideas to get rid of mosquitoes in a survival situation please let me know it Especially for little uh, midges, midgets, uh, midges, because I going on a hiking, hiking in Scotland, and there are a lot of midges. So if anybody has some tips about those, how to keep them off you, please let me know uh, within a week, because then I'm going to uh, a few weeks, because then I'm going to Scotland. Uh, another thing is just a little trap that I use for uh, to catch flies and almost any flying flying insect inside of my house. You take one of these plastic bottles and you cut the top off. You fill it with something sugary like uh, lemonade or sugar water. You take the, the piece that you uh, cut off, put it on top, make sure that the sides, that the sides are, are closed off. And that way the, in, the insects like wasp, uh, flies, perhaps some, some types of mosquitoes will get inside of the funnel, uh, will go to the sugar water, but they cannot get out anymore. So this is a very good improvised way that my grandma always used with success to catch flies. And it's very cheap and you can reuse it over and over again. 
One little tip if you're going to fill this with sugar water or lemonade, always take the top off before you fill it because uh, if, you, if you just leave the, the top on it and you fill it, then this will be, will be a, uh, glazed with the sugar water and the insects will not go inside of it. So make sure that you do not, not uh, get any of these uh, bait liquids onto, on top of it. So yeah, that's another thing. Uh, there's one last thing that I use for uh, for to deter uh, to get rid of flies because we all know if there is a fly or a mosquito in the house, we all have be have taken a rolled up a paper and went after it like a like like some crazy berserker or with a fly swap and going after it. But these little buggers are very fast. So what I like to do is, this will might sound strange, but this is a very small air rifle from my grandfather. It's one of these types that they use in the carnivals. Uh, the spring has lost through, through it, this thing is almost like 50 years old. The spring has worn out, but I, it's still strong enough for the next purpose. You can do this also with BB guns airsoft guns that you do not use anymore because of the reason I'm going to tell. What you do is... Uh, oh, fuck. Ah, here is it. You take salt. I prefer... Uh, I prefer to use salt that is a little bit uh, thicker like you can see. Not. Uh, you can also use the very uh, fine kind, but I prefer the, the big uh, sea salt uh, the sea salt uh, pellets that you can see and why you can uh, put this in your air rifle BB gun, airsoft gun uh, you, you just first uh, try to cock it and then you pour like, uh, like a musket the salt inside of it and you see somewhere a fly around what do you do? you just take aim and you fire the salt at the fly uh, or mosquito. Well, there's a benefit of, uh, of these airsoft rifles and the salt. The salt will not damage any surface that it will hit, but it will kill the fly or the mosquito. So that's the benefit of it. And to be honest, it's an awesome way to get rid of flies and mosquitoes. So yeah, uh, you can do this, like I said, with BB guns and use uh, more uh, growth uh, types of salt for uh, to get a little shotgun effect to get a, to you can even take one out during when they are flying so you do not have to wait uh, still be careful that you do not aim at other persons that you do not hit uh, with the salt in somebody's eyes or face so be careful about that safety before everything and that you do not aim at something that you do not want to shoot but usually the surface if it's even if it's glass or something sensitive Usually it's too weak to put even damage on that, but it's strong enough to take down a mosquito or a fly. So this is just a very fun way to get rid of these little bastards. So yeah, uh, if you know any other ways to get rid of uh, pest control, uh, to get rid of pests like flies, mosquitoes, midges, rats, mice, uh, perhaps some other types of insects that could uh, damage your harvest, Please let me know, especially about Colorado beetles in a, in a way that you can use in a long term situation without going to the stores. So please let me know it in the comment. I'm always eager to learn. Uh, yeah. So thank you for watching. Subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Share this video. Please leave some tips for me or for other people in the comments. I would really like to learn how other people would uh, do this. And uh, yeah like uh, and all that good stuff watch my other videos about other overlooked and uh, forgotten pepper items and yeah if you see a mosquito take your air rifle fill it oh by the way do not use a good air rifle like like this one because this one shoots too hard and to be honest it's uh, you do not want to put salt in a good rifle so it will oxidate so yeah, that's something you need to watch out for. So use a disposable air gun that you would other, other, otherwise not 
can, that you cannot do anything else with it. So if you see a mosquito or a fly, say uh, hello to, give him hello from my little friend uh, and, and say do you feel lucky, you little punk. Alright, this is the end of the video. See you, uh, thank you for watching, subscribe and see you the next. Cheers!